In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a hub assembly on a 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500. Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and we're just showing you how to do this. We're out on the back patio. We don't have any air tools, and we're just doing it with, you know, basic tools. Now, there are a few things you may need that you may not have. A torque wrench, you may need one of those, and some extra big sockets for the axle assembly bolt. Uh, you might need those, but you can probably get those at the parts store. Now, we've already taken the tire and wheel off. But I do want to mention this, you know, we've jacked it up and we've got two jack stands under there, uh, you know, holding and supporting that. You never want to work under a vehicle if it's not supported with jack stands. So make certain that you do that and keep safety first. Next, we're going to remove the upper and lower caliper assembly bolts, 21 millimeter. Just kind of showing you where they're located there. And you can take the whole assembly off at one time. And this uses a 21 millimeter socket. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, like I said, we're not using air tools, so we may have to improvise a little bit. So we've got a cheater bar. Uh, tool manufacturers may say not to do that, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So we got the cheater bar, got them loose, and then once we got them loose, you know, then we could finish uh, loosening them just with the ratchet. So we got those removed, and once that's removed, you can take the entire assembly off. Now, I just always love putting this in fast motion. It makes me think, man, if I could really work this fast, I'd get a lot of stuff done. So next we're going to get the caliper assembly and set it out of the way. Now we just set it up on top there. Uh, probably a good idea to use a bungee cord or something to keep it from falling, but you don't want it hanging from that brake hose. You want to, you want to, don't want all that pressure sitting on that brake hose. So set it up there, bungee cord it up there, whatever you got to do to keep it up there from, from uh, dangling. Next, you want to remove the rotor. Now, this one came off real easy, but sometimes you may have to hammer on that a little bit, maybe rust it a little bit holding on. But go ahead and remove the rotor. And then you can use a hammer and chisel or hammer and flathead screwdriver to knock that cap off, that rotor cap or that hub cap. So you want to take that off. And you need to be gentle with that. You don't want to hit it too hard and damage the cap. Just kind of lightly go around it until it comes off. And then it you know, should pop off pretty easy once it's ready. And now we can remove that uh, axle nut. And it's pretty tight. So we had to use an axle bar. Use a 35 millimeter. And uh, we probably wouldn't want to do this with your with your new lugs, but these are going to be replaced with the new rotor or the hub assembly. So we're not that worried about damaging these. So we're removing this using a cheater bar and a 35 millimeter. And now we can remove the four bolts, 15 millimeter. It's the hub assembly bolts back on the back side here, and you kind of see where where they're located. And uh, again, they're pretty tight. You may have to use a cheater bar on some of those if you can't get to them good but uh, we get those off and then we're ready to be ready to remove the hub assembly see like right there uh, that one was kind of tough to get off so I had to use a cheater bar and I just use the cheater bar to break it and uh, once it once I do that I can use a regular ratchet to remove it the rest of the way yeah it's a little more work without a shop lift and a you know an impact and all that but just showing you it can be done out on your driveway without a, air tools Then once you have those removed, you can tap on that axle lightly. Now you don't want to hit it too hard, just lightly tap on it to release the axle from the hub assembly so that you can pull that off. Make sure that that uh, nut is on there some so you don't damage the threads to the axle. Before removing the hub assembly, you want to be sure and remove that ABS wire sensor, sensor wire, and just kind of follow it up and you'll see the way it's routed. Remember the way it's routed, but you'll unplug it right there and then make sure that you notice where it all is clipped into you'll want to clip the new one back the exact same way this one came off. Now you can take the hub assembly off. Uh, you just may have to work at it a little bit. You know, sometimes they're a little tough. This one's stuck a little bit. But with a little pulling, we was able to get it off. And also make a mental note at this time how that dust shield is put on. Then you want to clean the axle area. Just get some lubricant, WD-40 or something like that, just to, to w spray on there. And then you want to wipe it off real good with a, with a rag. So get that all good and clean before we install the new hub assembly. Now we can start reversing the process and just start putting everything back, uh, kind of reversing of how we took everything off. And the last thing we took off was this dust shield. And we just want to install that and we want to push those bolts through and kind of get it lined up before we try to put the new hub assembly back on. Now that you have it all aligned, now you can install the hub assembly. Uh, but we did make a mistake, so we're going to have to stop you right here and talk about that. If you'll see, the dust shield was on the wrong way. It goes this way. So we actually had the hub on and had it uh, uh, all the way on before we realized we had this flipped around. So make sure you don't make that mistake and that you have that uh, 
dust shield on the right way. Remember I said to make sure to make a mental note of how that's on there? Well, we had it inside out. Now we can go back with the hub assembly. Uh, I didn't re-video it after flipping it, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the process. So you got to get it on there, and it's not real easy to get on. you got to kind of hold the axle up and twist it and get it just right to get it all aligned right. Uh, it takes just a little bit of work to get that on there, but once it's lined up, it'll slip right on really easy. Now you want to get your 15 millimeter bolts that go to the hub assembly and get those started into the, the hub and get those all hand tight and then you could use a ratchet or whatever just to kind of snug them up. You don't want to get them fully tight, you know, until you get it all on there and make sure everything's, uh, you know, nothing's cross threaded or anything like that. But once you get it all on, get all the bolts started, snugged up, and then you can torque them down to 133 foot pounds. If you don't have the torque wrench to torque these down with or the 35 millimeter socket, that's a really big socket, uh, you can usually go to your auto parts store like O'Reilly's or AutoZone and rent those tools and then when you take them back you'll get your money back. Now you can install your axle nut and you're going to torque it down to 177 foot-pounds. Uh, we did want to mess the threads up on this so we put it in four-wheel drive to lock it so that we could tighten this up and again that torques down to 177 foot-pounds. Now reroute your new ABS sensor wire that comes on the new hub assembly. It will come with that new wire. But you need to make certain that you route it the exact same way that it came off. And be sure and clip it in the exact places that it was clipped in. It will have the new clips on it. So you just need to find the holes that it originally went to. And this will keep it out of the way because you sure don't want the wire to get caught up in, the, in any of the rotor or anything and get chewed up. So make sure that you run it back and then plug it back in the exact way that it came off. Now you can put your hub cover back on and just use a hammer, but don't hit it too hard. Just kind of go around the edges and lightly tap it until it's on real secure. Now before trying to put your rotor assembly back on that brake, you need to compress that some. You can use some vice grips like I have here or a C-clamp. And you don't have to compress it a whole lot. Just compress it a little bit. That way it'll fit back on the rotor without a lot of struggle of trying to get it on. And once that uh, is compressed, it'll make it a lot easier to slide back on the rotor, this whole assembly. Once you have that compressed, then you can put the, the caliper assembly on. And you may have to wiggle it just a little bit, uh, keep the brake pads from trying to fall in on you. You know, it takes just a little bit of a time, but it goes on pretty easy. Right there, you see how you kind of caught it and it went on real easy. Just got to wiggle it till you get it to that point. But once you get it on, then you want to align the two caliper bolts and then you're going to want to torque those down to 80 foot-pounds. And that, my friends, is how you change the hub assembly on a 2004 Chevy Silverado on the driveway with no air tools. Then put your tire and wheel back on and you are ready to roll. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.